Hello YouTube. A few days ago, I was scrolling Instagram, something I rarely do because it's full of bullshit, and a certain post caught my attention. It was a post by a guy called Liver King. Now, I've seen his name float around YouTube Fitness for a while, I've seen his pictures, but I was never really interested. And the reason why is, I am fairly, you know, used to guys like this. There's always, for some reason, a new guy that pops out of nowhere every six months who is going to be jacked out of their mind and who is going to build a large audience and who is going to disappear at some point after they've made a ton of money. That is just part for the course. That's what bodybuilding is bringing into this world. It's an endless stream of grifters and of scam artists. So I never actually took any interest in the guy. But by looking at that particular post, especially the text associated with the picture, I was immediately hooked because it was containing something I hadn't seen before. And the more I read, the more I realized that I had to make a video about the guy. Now, uh, you know me, I don't make Nelly or Nuts. I think Nelly or Nuts are perfectly stupid. They don't really bring anything to the table. It's usually just speculations. And on top of that, they tend to actually damage the lives of the people who consume them because they are toxic. That being said, today I want to offer something different because I truly believe that Liver King encapsulates everything that is wrong right now with the way fitness is being pushed onto young men. And so I've decided to actually go onto his website and use that as a basis for a critique of the industry as a whole to help you understand the issue and the strategies you can put in place to not be suckered into the type of, again, marketing schemes and scamming practices that this type of individual tries to push on you. So let's observe the liver king. Let's, let's decipher what it all means and where it all starts and ends when it comes to actually getting your money. Because at the end of the day, it's all these people care about. It's always that cyclical apparition of grifters who make a joke out of bodybuilding to make a good living. And it's the reason why bodybuilding, modern bodybuilding, is a complete joke. It's because the people who represent bodybuilding are clowns. Now, I've always noticed with that type of person that they all have the same thing in common. For some reason, they are all clearly on PEDs, but they all go through a phase where they deny it, and that phase can actually last for as long as they live. We all know the very classical example of Michael Hearn, who still to this day claims natural. Well, Liver King claims natural. Now, as I've told you, this is not an idea or not. I'm not going to tell you that his arms look suspicious, so he's not natural. I don't care about that. It's, it's not the problem. Of course, he's not natural, but I'm not even going to try and prove that to you. Instead, I'm going to look at his methods and the way he speaks to people, because the liver king is more than his appearance. I think the most important part of that guy's persona is the character he's trying to portray, what that means, and the reason why so many men actually fall for it, because... He has perfectly understood that there is a crisis with masculinity and that he can play with that crisis to actually make a lot of money. So let's observe that together. Now, the way I want to observe it is very well structured and it's going to be based off of his tenants. So the guy came up with nine tenants of modern living, of rebuilding your body as a man, and they are all organized after specific themes. And topics. So if we actually follow the themes and topics, we can look at what he preaches, what he says, but also what it all means. Because I've seen a ton of people review the guy online. The reviews tend to be extremely positive. So I think it's just that because the guy has a very huge following, they don't want to actually say anything mean. I, of course, don't have such inclinations. I will be as mean as humanly possible if it serves my point. But rather than just stay at face value and stay at the surface level that so many people stay at when they look at his principles, I want to again look at what's underneath the surface. What do they mean and how do they serve the purpose of actually getting you to trust the guy to buy his products, etc, etc. You will see that it's actually quite complex and very interesting. On top of that, of course, his physique serves as a beautiful billboard for his practices, for his uh, principles that he pushes on people. And that's also something I've seen people focus on because the average normie, the average noob, 
doesn't understand what anabolics is, or if they do, they have a very vague idea of it. So you can just show them a very jacked physique of a man, and they will pretty much listen to whatever the guy has to say. It's sad, but there's nothing we can do about that. The only thing we can do is, again, try to look beyond the physique, beyond the surface, because it's the reason why Nali or Nuts don't work. They tend to focus on surface level shit, and they don't explore the details. They don't explore the motives of the of the individual. And when you only focus again on the envelope, well, the Nadi or Not is not effective because, again, most people do not possess the ability to actually logically look at someone and think, okay, based on what I know of the person, it's impossible that they're natural. So instead, you have to explain to people why it makes sense that the guy wouldn't be natural based on marketing. And in this case, it's made very easy by the fact, again, that I have access to a website that is 100% marketing. And it's a website I recommend you check out because it's a masterclass in manipulation. It's a masterclass in designing, in social engineering, in using certain images, certain essence to get you to, to be a certain way, to get you to think a certain way so that you can be in the right state of mind to become a sucker. So, this is what I call the tree that hides the forest. It's the tenets that I'm going to detail today. You will see that every single tenet that is being pushed by the liver king makes sense, meaning that they are all actually based on reality and they're all based on things that we can all change to better our lives. But that's where the trap is. If the tenets were stupid, you would ignore the guy altogether because they make sense, again, linked with his physique because the guy is jacked and big. Now he has you. Now he actually got you where he wants you to be. So, he calls them the ancestral tenets, and they are pretty much nothing but marketing schemes. So let's observe them, and let's observe the connection between the tenets, the guy that made them, and you. Because at the end of the day, again, you are the prey. You are the person who is being targeted. So, let's start with number one. Number one is sleep, right? Sleeping is very important to build muscle. It's very important to be healthy and to have healthy hormones. That is absolutely correct. And there are a few ways to, again, uh, turn that into a, a better experience for you. So, the liver king is going to tell you to get the sun, to block blue light, to have your circadian rhythm on point, to go to bed at a certain time, to sleep enough. All of that is, is well and nice. That's the surface level shit. That, that's the, the happy-go-lucky good stuff that is presented to you. Now, what comes afterwards is the part where I'm interested, because... He also tells you that if you want to reduce the amount of blue light that you consume before bed, you can buy a certain type of glasses. So already, there is the idea that there is something to buy to be able to achieve the goal that is being presented. But it doesn't stop there. If you want to try it out for yourself and see that I'm not lying, you can type Liver King in Google. And you will see that the very first Google, uh, Google result is going to be for supplements. That, that says a lot, right? If you type my name in Google, the first thing you will see is not supplements. It's going to be a free program. This is by design, meaning that he paid to have these results show up first in Google. Meaning that when someone looks up his name, the first thing he wants people to see is not the help that he provides with the website. It's the products he sells. And those products range, again, from these glasses to supplements, to a wide area of things. But that truly shows to us what his real goal is. His real goal is to be money via the supplements again. And it, of course, wouldn't be as effective if he just told you to buy supplements. So what he has to do is he has to give you a list of things that you're not doing properly, that are not balanced in your life, that are damaging your life, and then he offers a solution. And because he's presenting himself to be a certain way, you are going to buy it. And I think that it's the reason why so many men fall for that type of persona and fall for the liver king meme is because he represents a certain ideal of masculinity that he portrays via his physique, but also what he preaches. When he tells you to, again, connect with the sun, con uh, reject the screens, all of that resonates with you because you, have, you are devoid of masculinity. And that is something that we can all relate to. There is a lack of masculinity in this world. But it's gotten to a point where we are so disconnected with it. We haven't seen it for so long 
that we don't really even know what it means anymore and we don't know what it looks like. So pretty much anyone can show up and portray it. Masculinity is up for grabs. Anyone can actually be the alpha, the macho man. And that's exactly what he's done. He has filled a spot that was needed because he perfectly understands it. It puts him in a very good situation to sell you products. And that's not a healthy expression of masculinity at all, of course. It is saddening in a sense to see that we are so lacking in real men, we are so lacking in people we can look up to, that a literal Neanderthal, a caveman like him, would be able to fill that spot. Because at the end of the day, pretty much what he did is he, he disguised himself. He played dress up. He grew a beard. He grew muscles. And then he had his entire shtick and persona about, again, going back to our roots and reject, rejecting the modern world. And that worked perfectly. He didn't really have to do much. That is insane when you think about it, that this level of marketing is enough to tap into most people's consciousness to the point that they are going to trust that type of person. I've always found it strange because it, he's not the first one to do it. We can all think back to a big guy who appeared out of nowhere on YouTube or Instagram and who tried to sell themselves as the pinnacle of masculinity and therefore then try to tell us how to be men. Now the question I have for you is, how logical and how legitimate is it for a man who is clearly on drugs, who is clearly on exogenous hormones, to be telling anyone how to be a man? That is an inversion of value that is quite severe, meaning that what we consider to be the most manly men out there are men on steroids. On YouTube Fitness, it's pretty much one-to-one. -one. Every single guy that has this status, this macho status, is someone who takes drugs. I don't know if you're aware of that or if Liver King actually opened the book on that topic, but people in the past didn't take PEDs. The very taking of PEDs is a modern reality. So are we really to the point where men are such wimps that the only expression of masculinity we can accept as being a guiding light is one replicated in a laboratory, one replicated with injections? Are we really that far down the rabbit hole of being again wimp and emasculated? I hope not, but when I see guys like this who can seemingly pop out of nowhere and get a massive audience, I'm questioning myself. Now, the, that type of over-the-top macho personality, as I said, is, of course, very appealing to a generation of men that grew up disconnected from nature, without a father or role model, or who have no fucking clue how to train or eat. I think the first one is the most important one, because a large part of the shtick of Liver King is the fact that he's reconnecting you with nature. Of course, most of you, most of everyone live in big cities or medium cities with like a tree or two here and there, but you never actually go into the forest, you don't swim in the sea, you only see cement and buildings all day long, and it is slowly eroding your soul. That guy has perfectly understood that. And in a sense, he's trying to offer to you a replacement. But the replacement is not nature. The replacement is his product. It's the same for the fatter shtick. The dude understands that many young men grew up without a dad, or they had a dad, which is really just a sad sack of shit that did nothing all day and had no balls. So you, as a young man, constantly look for someone to fill that gap, and he's right there to be doing that exact same thing. And once he's going to have the ability to establish trust with you, he's going to use that to sell you products. That has been done a million times on YouTube Fitness. Every single time you see that type of persona being pushed, you know that it's for one reason and one reason only, to take your money. Now, when it comes to taking money, the best way and the best method he has is the supplements. It's the dietary supplements that he sells. And that leads us to number two, the diet. If you listen to his tenets and you look at the diet part, it makes a ton of sense at first. He tells you to stop eating uh, uh, processed food, to refocus on whole foods, and to focus on quality products. He has his entire shtick focused around animal products and around eating raw meat. That, of course, is part of the character and the persona. It's, of course, not a balanced diet, and most people shouldn't eat like this, but it's the gimmick, right? When you have a gimmick, you have to be special. You have to be fresh, because if you do something that's already been done, people are going to ignore it. So it's part, again, of the marketing scheme. He's doing something crazy 
to capture your attention. And because you most likely don't eat like that, it does capture your curiosity and you think, oh, maybe if, if I eat like him, I'm going to look like him. Of course, it's never going to happen, but he really does want you to think this because that way you are going to buy his supplements. And if you look at the slogan of the website, put back what the modern world left out, it's very easy to see that this entire thing is built around a fear of missing out, of missing out that integral part of the diet or of the lifestyle that used to be a component of an anabolic lifestyle for a male, and that is completely missing nowadays. And he's offering to give that to you now. I have a question. What exactly did the modern wood left out? Right? Because from what I see, the syringes are present, the overpriced supplements are present. I mean, this looks like the modern wood I know. It's the modern wood of bodybuilding. It's always been the same shit. It's some guy taking drugs who is going to then sell you supplements and tell you he got big off of the supplements. So there's nothing new here. And it's the same for the type of products that he pushes or promotes, the organs. Now, I don't know if you guys have been aware of that, but the entire idea of eating organs to be jacked and big is not new. It's been around for 60, 70 years. The old school bodybuilders already did that. The bodybuilders in the 70s, 80s already did that. It's always been a thing to eat organ meat to get the benefits. Now, of course, these are not unhealthy things to eat by all means, and people can benefit from consuming that type of product, but it's never going to make you big. No food has the power to make you big. It's still just an old gimmick that he took out of the bag and just dusted off and presented to people who were not used to it at all because they're too young or they simply don't. Remember, again, when you take a dude who drinks four locos and who eats just white bread all day every day, yeah, if you tell him that if he eats liver, he's going to finally be able to have a, a hard-on for one is, once in his life and he's going to be anabolic and stop being a wimp, yeah, it might work. You might actually convince him. Now, of course, the issue with that type of presentation is that, for the most part, most people will not want to change their diet to that effect, and this is what the supplements come in. But before I talk about the supplements and the reason why they're a scam, I want to quickly discuss the obsession with meat. Because I don't know if you've realized or noticed, but for some reason, in today's society, we associate the consumption of meat with masculinity. Apparently, it's very manly to eat meat. Now, I could accept that hypothesis if you hunted the animal and killed it with a knife, but if you just went to a supermarket and bought beef and then ate it, how does that make you a man? You did nothing. You didn't hunt the animal. Uh, it's to me, is just, again, another application of what I call uh, internet or online masculinity. It's, it's, there's, there's two types of masculinity. There's real-life masculinity that you can find in people, in role models, in yourself, in books, in historical figures. And then there's online masculinity. And when you look at what internet has done to masculinity, I'm starting to think that it would have been a better thing if we had never invented the damn thing. Because it gave birth to the alpha, omega, fucking sigma, grinder, sigma, sigma meme of a gazillion types of men that in reality mean absolutely fucking nothing, that are just constant iterations of people who compare the size of their dicks via computers, which I don't really see the point of, but also the birth of things like this, and of people like this, who in reality sell you the image of masculinity through your computer screen, hoping that you're going to bite, because you are looking for masculinity in real life and you can't find it. So you find it the only way you can, which is on Instagram or YouTube. And that is also, again, an iteration of pseudo-masculinity. But because the guy actually managed to find a few animal products that we stopped consuming for a reason or another, he has also managed to tell you that these are the key for your gains. Because, of course, since you don't eat these things, well, he can tell you that it's the reason why you're not big. If you actually start eating them, you will be big. It doesn't work like that, of course, because no food has the ability to make you look more jacked. But a ton of people are going to fall for it. I guarantee you that there's tens of thousands of people who fell for the meme, who listened to Liver King, who started to eat just the way he does, and who saw absolutely no results because, of course, it doesn't have the power to make you big. And this is where the trap closes itself on you because once you do that you are placing yourself in a situation where you trusted the guy 
and nothing happened. Or even worse, you actually got uh, uh, worsened health because it's fairly possible to eat raw meat again and develop bacteria, get bacteria, or get sick. I mean, at the end of the day, we cook our foods for a reason. But the beautiful thing is that when this happens, he will find excuses to tell you why they didn't work. Every single one of these guys is the same. They got their results via drugs. So they don't have the ability to offer you any methods that are going to give you results. But they'll still do it, do it because they want to make money. The second you fell, however, they have excuses put in place to explain to you why it didn't work. So they'll tell you that you didn't do it properly or that you don't have the proper genetics or that you don't work hard enough. All of that is already in the cards. I can guarantee you that now. With him, what is going to happen and the mechanism that was put in place to actually get your ass is that if you tell him that it didn't work that way, what he'll tell you in return is that maybe you should just try his supplements because he sells liver supplements, he sells organ supplements. As I told you, when you look up his name, it's the first thing you find. So all of that is going to lead you to take the supplements. And for most people, it's what they're going to do to start with because it's always better to just buy a few pills and swallow them a few times a day than to go to buy and cook organ meat that tends to be quite pungent and a lot of people don't actually enjoy that type of taste. It's all part of the plan. It's always going to be to present to you with something difficult that is going to give you magical results and then to, f to actually find you an easier solution that is more pricey, of course, in the form of a supplement because Liver King, just like any other scam artist on the internet, understands that every single person prefers the path of least resistance, which is paradoxical considering his entire message is that you have to struggle. How exactly is it letting people struggle to sell them a supplement that is going to make it easier to consume a product? I also would like to mention the fact that our ancestors did not consume pills and they certainly did not consume steroids or inject themselves with PEDs. But that's something that I've already said. So that's for all of that supplement nonsense. Now, I read a few articles about the guy to actually prepare and I found something that actually is worth pointing out because it's also a parameter that tends to repeat itself with that, with that type of personality. I've always found that the type of people fascinated by the macho, bearded, big muscle persona tend to be people who are very small themselves. Meaning that actual lifters, people who are actually a little bit more advanced, who have been training and have seen results, don't fall for that stuff because they see right through it. The only people that don't are suckers and soy boys. It's people who actually have nothing to show for in terms of muscle mass. And that's why they, they fall for it so easily. It's also, I believe, a weird, again, w willingness and tendency to find a superior. These people constantly look for a king. Again, there's a reason why the guy called himself Liver King. He understands that there is a host of whims and of inferior males that are looking for a savior, they're looking for someone to guide them, and he's providing exactly that, and making a ton of money in the meanwhile. But the discrepancy between the people that they follow and themselves exists also in pro bodybuilding. Most people who love pro bodybuilding don't train themselves. That should tell you something. It should tell you that usually that type of environment and the type of communities that form themselves around such a strong masculine figure tends to be very toxic and it tends to be for a reason. PD users always thrive off of that type of suckers because it makes up the, mo the vast majority of their audience and that's how they fill up their bank account. And the more, the more I dug, the more I read bodybuilding articles, the more I clicked on links and on pictures, the more I realized that the entirety of the circuit in terms of the media that covers bodybuilding, pro bodybuilding, is made up of people who don't even fucking lift, meaning that every single person was small. But the important thing to keep in mind is that the same people give credibility to guys like Liver King because they cover them and they suck their dick in the article because, of course, they're just they are in they are entranced with the image and the, the pungent hodder of daddy, and so they are constantly looking for a replacement uh, for their father. And by doing that, they also in a sense, give these guys visibility, which means that other men that are in the same scenario and the same category fall for the same trap again and again. Keep in mind that these are the same people that are going to give you advice on how to train, even though they know absolutely nothing, and fall for that type 
of scam. Now, they also spread information, as I said, but uh, what I want people to keep in mind is that if you follow the methods that that type of PD user pushes, you're going to self-sabotage because, again, the methods are not sound. They are put in place as marketing schemes. The only point is to get you to buy products, not to get you to progress. So if you refuse to buy the product, which would be a good thing, you're still going to self-sabotage because the methods are not going to work. You thought that the guy, was, the guy was there to give you advice to make you better. In reality, he doesn't give a fuck about that. The only thing he wants is to funnel you towards a page where you're going to enter your credit card information. Whatever happens between then and there doesn't matter to the guy. Now, the proof I have of it is tenant number three the training, what he call movement. Now, the way he trains is not that bad, meaning that I've seen worse. I've seen PD users with much worse training programs. What he does is a type of modified, a modified website bubble system, which is a great program for strength. It can be utilized for size if you know what you're doing. So that's not really the problem at end. As I said, the tenants are not the problem. They're the tree that hides the forest. They're all based on things that make sense. Yes, you want to take the sun. Yes, you want to sleep. Yes, you want to focus on eating whole foods. Yes, you want to train as much as possible. All of that is good. Again, it's what comes afterwards that's fucking horrendous. Because once you take a look at the training and what it entails, you quickly realize that the training that he does is part of the marketing scheme. The training that he does is a full-on gimmick. I have seen the way he says he trains all week round. Then I looked at the posts on Instagram and what he promotes to people. And you quickly notice that he doesn't promote compound movements. He doesn't promote the old school, boring shit. He only promotes the stuff that he knows people have never seen and therefore make it fresh. For example, carrying a fucking deer carcass on your shoulders and going for a hike. Yeah, people have never seen that. It's very cool in the eyes of normies, so they suck it up. Likewise, going for a hike with a weighted vest or with ankle weights or by having a sled dragging behind you, all of that shit is very appealing. Issue is, it makes up 5% of his training and it's not something that's very effective for hypertrophy. But he will, of course, push that in the forefront because he wants you to see it. That is the curse of that type of individual. They cannot just train normally. Because if they train normally, again, they, had no, they would have nothing to sell to you because you cannot sell the basics. You cannot sell a program with compound movements and isolation, even though it is the best way to train for a natural lifter. That is because his marketing and the marketing of every single person of his type focuses on the gimmick. And once you see the gimmick, it's impossible to miss. And I know that even though it should be just blatantly obvious in this case what the gimmick is, I find that some people don't get it. The gimmick is that he's a guy that grew a beard, pretends to be a caveman and to train and live like one. That's it. All of this shit is an image to sell you a product, right? This is not a caveman. It's a businessman. It's different. He might not wear a suit, but the intention is the same. It's a similar intention. You also see that with the focus on pain. Now, with pro bodybuilders, it's always a thing. For some reason, they always focus on pain. They always like to tell you how painful the training is, how they are going to make you puke in a bucket if you train with them, which does absolutely nothing, of course. But it's the typical masochistic uh, routines that tend to put stars in the eyes of people because they think it's hardcore. They think it's cool. We have this image and idea that to bodybuild and to build muscle, you have to suffer. That, of course, is not true, at least not in the sense that these people entail. What it means instead is that you should embrace discipline. You should embrace movements that make sense for a very long time. But again, that is not sexy. That is not going to solve anything. So instead, he's going to tell you that you need to focus on movements that bring pain. And movements that bring pain are going to be movements that he's going to be doing himself. So again, very long walks, carrying things, putting up trees on his shoulders, all of that shit that is amazing on Instagram, but does absolutely nothing in real life. He also recommends switching up training lifts constantly to shock the muscle, which is again, an old myth that I would have hoped would have been disproven by now, but you still have people who do it, even though it makes absolutely no sense because you cannot shock the muscle. The muscle is tissue. It is 
perfectly adapted to be able to just handle work again and again. You don't need to just switch it up for the sake of the muscle. You switch it up for your sake if you get bored or to avoid injuries, but for growth's sake, it makes no sense. But he very confidently is going to keep repeating that it does because he understands that the people who are going to listen to him don't know anything about training and don't know their history. Because if you know your history, again, you would be like me or like many people on this channel, and you would tell me that you've seen this shit before. I have seen this guy before. The beard, the pseudo masculinity, all of that is, is very common. It's a very common strategy to sell products. But the same old bullshit from the past can work on suckers that have no idea what happened yesterday. Understand that when it comes to these tenets as well, I don't believe that anyone will actually follow them, meaning that no one is going to follow the tenets because they are hard or because they make sense or because they look like something that could improve their life. Instead, they are going to enjoy him because he is like a novelty item. He's entertaining and entertainment is the easiest way to sell something to people. You wouldn't believe how useless good information is. You truly don't need good information to get people in. What you need is good packaging. And his packaging is fucking primal shit. Go on his website again. It's amazing. It's like a National Geographic documentary. It's, it's the stuff of legends, but it's void. Right? It's very pretty. It's a very shiny toot, but it's entirely void. It's exactly what his training is as well. At least what he projects and tells people to do. It looks good on the outside, it looks grimy and rough and, and rugged, but it's never going to get you to look the way he looks. However, I have read articles by all of the soy boys that for some reason have a hard on for the guy, and you wouldn't believe the type of adjectives that they use to describe his body. At the end of the day, I feel like they are living through him. He represents a weird fantasy of them going back to their primal days and becoming a beast, but they're completely unwilling to actually put in the work, so instead, they're just going to enjoy the spectacle, they're going to enjoy the liver king, and they might actually make an offering at some point or the other, which is exactly what he seeks, but they'll never actually put in the work to look close to him, even if it were possible naturally. Tenant number four is shield. Now, it's a little bit obscure, but it's quite simple to get. What liver king wants you to do is, he wants you to push away all toxins, that come from this modern wood. And it sounds very nice. Again, it is absolutely perfectly applicable. He tells you to stay away from screens. He tells you to stay away from intoxicants. All of which make a ton of sense for lifters and people who want to be more healthy in general because we all engage in a certain level of vices that we take for normal. But if we were to actually take them away from our life, we would see that it would immediately improve. It, of course, doesn't stop there because you quickly find out that his appeal or his, uh, again, again, attempts at getting you to reject toxins is only applied to certain ones, but not others. For example, when people ask him, hey, do you drink alcohol? His answer is, yes, he does drink alcohol and not any type of alcohol. He actually drinks very strong liquor. So I... It puzzled me a little bit. I didn't quite understand why, because at the end of the day, one of the most widespread toxins that people consume all the time is alcohol. Binge drinking is part of the culture nowadays. And I think I figured out why. The type of men that he's trying to suck uh, into his marketing schemes and into his scam are also the type that are going to equate drinking alcohol with masculinity. I'm sure you've met these guys. It's the guys that tell you that if you don't drink beer, you're not a man. Or if you don't drink like whiskey, you're not a man. That certain drinks are girly, etc., etc. All of that nonsense is still very prevalent in a lot of people's heads. It's like the idea that eating meat makes you more manly. That guy has perfectly understood that. He also understands that, therefore, if he is anti-alcohol, he's going to alienate a large portion of potential customers. So he did a 180 on that one even though it makes absolutely no sense because based on what he preaches, you're supposed to reject toxins. So alcohol should be one of them. He himself indulges in alcohol. So it could also just be that he didn't want to give up one of his vices. No one will ever know. But there is a particular quote from that guy that I found incredibly humorous. And it's actually the quote that got me to make this video because I couldn't believe how smug, how ridiculous and how clearly evasive that quotation was. It goes as such. 
Liver King has never cheated nor taken a shortcut in any capacity in life. That sounds exactly like something uh, like an eight-year-old would tell you if you caught them cheating on a test. Like it's the type of stuff that PE users have been using for years and years to, to try to escape attempts at pointing the finger at results or at methods that shouldn't result in the bodies that they have. This is something that he has said to people who accused him of being on PEDs because he claims to be entirely natural, which of course I don't fucking believe. I would sooner believe that the Pope is actually a Martian than this guy is natural. But since he is in a position where he can just shrug his shoulders and say, hey, how are you going to prove it? Well, no one is going to because the only thing we can do is we can make endless Nadia nuts about the guy, which at the end of the day only make him more popular, drive more people towards his page and get him to sell more products. It's a win-win situation. The best way to engage with that type of smug assholes who, again, play the weedy part of the unknowing witness is just to ignore them altogether because at the end of the day, they don't know what they're talking about and they're not very helpful. But the second you put the spotlights on them, you make them very dangerous. So for every single person that made a Nadia or not on Liver King, congratulations, you pushed hundreds, thousands of young men into the arms of a scam artist by pretending to try to expose him, which at the end of the day, we both know wasn't the point. The point was to make views off of the back of another fake Nadia. But to get back on the shield thing, I have an issue with the entire mindset too, because as I said, what he says is that the toxins that we reject, the ones that he pretends to not be consuming, are shortcuts. And he himself never has never taken a shortcut in his life. Well, the issue is that our ancestors were constantly looking for shortcuts, and it's actually the way we evolved. So his entire shtick, based off of evolution, falls apart really quickly the second you look at it. It's also the reason why I say that it has never been about helping you, but it's also never been about making any sense, because it doesn't make any sense. Shortcuts are the law of evolution. Everything that we've ever done was to reduce the amount of time we have to work to get to a position to be more effective and more productive. It's also the reason why, I don't know if you fucking noticed, if you go outside, we're not just wearing just small panties and going from bush to bush to collect blueberries. We have more efficient methods to get stuff done. Now, I do agree that things have gotten out of hand with this modern world, but this attempt to go back to caveman days is completely ridiculous. And actually, recently I was reading, to prepare for one of my videos, uh, I was reading Nietzsche, and uh, Nietzsche had a point, made a point more than a hundred years ago, about the fact that there was going to be a crisis with modernity, and masculinity in particular, but that a large portion of men were going to try and go back in time, meaning that they would try to claw and climb and, and just grab onto the past with vigor because they would think that it's better that way, that the, the modernity that we have today is garbage, with, which it is, and therefore we have to go back, we have to be the way we used to be which is, of course, impossible. You cannot. We cannot go back in time. Time is moving forward. We have to move with the times. We have to find be me better methods. That's exactly what he's not doing. What he's doing instead is he's reinventing what it meant to be a man 5,000 years ago so that it can actually fit his marketing schemes. Because I guarantee you again that our ancestors were not living the way this guy is living. He's essentially telling you that you can get the levels of testosterone and IGF and growth hormones of someone who is a drug user if you follow his principles. The problem again being that our ancestors did not have that. I know that we all like to believe that back then the test levels were so much higher, they were maybe a little bit, but not that much. Nothing that would justify actually looking like the guy or looking superhuman. Our ancestors had something that we don't anymore, which is the ability to engage in an environment that is very challenging. Nowadays, the environment is too comforting. The problem being that the reason why this guy looks the way he does is not because his environment is uncomfortable. It's because the body that is in the environment is injecting off very uncomfortable stuff that he will never tell you, of course. He'll just tell you that if you do exactly like, uh, if you live exactly like the way he lives, you will be able to replicate the same hormone levels. When you target men who have been t told times and times again 
that they have low T and that the reason why their life suck, sucks is because they have low T, you are going to suck these people in. It's the same strategies that the TRT industry and the testosterone industry in general and those youth clinics has been utilizing for years. They know that you are not happy with the way you look. They know you're not happy with the way you feel about yourself as a man. So they interject and they tell you have the solution. But to be able to sell you the solution first, they have to show you the results. It's the reason why Liver King looks the way he does. If he was a skinny McGee with tiny round glasses, he would never be able to sell you these products because you wouldn't believe him. But because he, again, has the character down to pat, it works perfectly well. So that's... The, for the shield proponent, again, it's another attempt at getting your money. And you also need to keep in mind one thing. Big naturals, the people who've been training for 10 years plus and who have good, decent natural physiques, don't have insane test levels. I guarantee you that if you were to test all of the big natties on YouTube, we would all be within average or above average range, but nothing supra-physiological, nothing that would make your, make your eyes pop, the only difference is that we've been training for a very long time. And that is a message for every single person that wants to look bigger. Yes, fixing your hormonal profile is very important, but it's just the first step. After that, you have to train. This guy tells you that once you fix the, uh, the environment, you're good. Well, that's not true. And even if it were the way to fix the environment, is certainly not to do things like this. Let's go on to number five. Number five is connect. Now, connect is a bunch of hippie bullshit. I'm going to be straight with you. It's stuff like don't wear shoes and connect with the earth because it's going to magnetize all of the toxins in your body and suck it out. It's wild, okay? It fascinates me that he was able to take stuff that usually is reserved for soy boys and people who are going to shop at Whole Foods and who have dreadlocks, even though they're white, and he managed to make it appealing to a masculine audience and to people who actually usually don't resonate with that type of stuff. And... It is, again, this attempt at reconnecting you with nature, which in reality is not really nature. It's what he wants nature to be. He presents nature as something that is, is cute, is tailored toward, towards being able to sell products afterwards. Because if it was as easy as going into the forest and taking a hike, he can't sell you that. So he's not going to try and tell you that. Instead, he's going to find methods that are going to then link back and loop back to his programs, his products. And this is exactly what he does here. It starts by telling you to, to not wear shoes, which is, it's not going to help much, but it's, it's not going to kill you either. However, he tells you that the reason why you want to do that is because connecting with the earth like this and grounding is going to reduce your blood pressure and heart attack rates. Now, I don't know if he's aware, but no amount of frolicking in the pastures and rubbing your feet on dirt is going to undo the damage that you do to your coronary arteries with all of that PED and all of that steroid use. Uh, I hope he's aware of that. It's a very important notion to keep in mind. Now, for the average person, yeah, walking around in the grass and wearing out people with your toes that look like hobbit toes is not going to do much for you. Right? You're not going to be more manly, you're not going to grow a beard, you're not going to get big biceps. Just because you do that, it's again, a gimmick. But I find it incredibly interesting because it's a gimmick coming from a guy that is supremely confident, so you're going to buy it. You wouldn't believe the amount of stuff you can get people to believe and to buy if you sound confident when you say it. And this guy has, has it perfectly figured out. Now, the problem I have with this, and it's a problem I have with all of these pseudo-alpha males and top macho men on YouTube Fitness and everywhere on the internet, is that it's a facade. It's not real. In a sense, just like the physiques that are built off of drugs, the confidence that comes with it is also factitious. It's not really going to go... It's not really standing in the way of anything because what happened with this guy in particular is that People were making fun of him for having small legs because he, for someone who does drugs, he does have tremendously small legs. And so they actually managed to bully him into training his legs. And when he did that, that's something that I've witnessed myself, he did it by doing a squat with bumper plates. Now, I'm not accusing him of using fake plates. I am, however, accusing him of lying about the weights he was using, meaning that he, he did it without really doing it. 
he put the plates on the bar and he was like, hey, look, it's a four plate squat, but you don't really know if these are actually 45s. They don't look like 45s to me. So it's interesting that someone who is regarded by many as the paragon of confidence in masculinity would be so insecure as to actually fall for it when people actually pointed out the fact that his physique was really unbalanced. Also, I don't think our ancestors were curl bros or chest bros who only did upper body with tiny chicken legs. I think that it was actually quite the opposite. They would run around all the time and they certainly wouldn't want to carry all that bulk in the upper body, which is again a, a non-consequential point to make because they could have never built upper bodies like this with their diet, with the way they lived, because keep in mind that this guy doesn't live like our ancestors and he certainly doesn't look like them. Because if he did look, our, look like our ancestors, no one would buy his products. First off, because it would be scary to look at, and also because his physique would not be something that you would want to achieve yourself. So for the connect part, that's one thing. It's interesting because that's the way he connects with his audience. It's that third persona. And that third persona is his entire character at the end of the day. It's a gimmick. I guarantee you that off of the camera, he doesn't behave like that. He doesn't talk like that, just like all of these guys. It plays off of the first for masculinity that we all have inside. We desire it. We know that we have been stolen that portion of a very important identity to a point. And there are people like him who have realized that and who have managed to, again, sneak themselves into the mix to provide it to us at a cost. Keep in mind one thing. Masculinity is free. And buying products and worshipping people is not very masculine at all. But the average man nowadays doesn't know that. And because we also all have a certain level of distrust for modernity, we are going to, again, sometimes fall for traps like this. So I'm going to try and give you as much resources as possible so that it doesn't happen to you. Because at the end of the day, the only thing it does to follow guys like this is that it takes you away from your actual masculine strength. Because the solution, again, of going back to the caves that the, this guy proposes and promotes is not going to work. And it, it annoys me and disgusts me because this is when respect for our ancestors and the ability to call upon ancient wisdom has been turned into a farce. He made it into a joke. Again, I read several of his Instagram posts. I cannot believe that people read them with a straight face and like them and think that they are inspiring. They're all insultingly patronizing. They're all written as fairy tales and they're very childlike in nature. And it truly is, in a sense, a pastiche. It's like a, it's like a parody of what being a man is. And it makes total sense because, again, if you, if you go to the bottom of things, th here is a man pretending to be a caveman that wants you to live like cavemen used to live. Why exactly do people not see through that shit? I have no idea, but they don't. Another thing that cracked me up is the fact that he would do overhead press with branches without ever mentioning the weight. That is a very, very small trick because normies have no fucking clue what things weight. So you can lift something like a couch, for example, and they'll be amazed because in their mind, a couch is very heavy, but a couch is a few hundred pounds at best. Even that is way overestimating what a couch weights. The same like with a fridge. I remember carrying a fridge on my shoulder to put into a, 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 a what is the term in English? Un, un camion déménagement, a moving truck, and people looking at me like, oh my God, he's the orc. No, the fridge weights 50 pounds. It's fucking light. It's not a challenge at all. Likewise for the branches. The guy presses branches. Oh, big fucking deal. A branch is what, like 40 pounds? So he, he, he over it presses an empty barbell. I, I'm amazed. It truly was worth it to take all of these drugs. But it really goes to show the caliber of people who fall for that bullshit. It's people who are completely, completely clueless. So that was four five. Now let's talk about six. Code. Liver King wants you to be cold because it's good for circulation, it promotes brown fat, and it is overall a way to actually bring discomfort into your life. All of that again makes total sense. Thank you, Liver King, for your tenets of wisdom. Now let's look at the poison hidden underneath all of that knowledge. One, the cold won't get you jacked, right? I, I know it hurts. I wish I could just roll on in the snow and have massive biceps, but it doesn't work like that. And I can tell you from first rate experience, because I train in a gym that is at 20 degrees for eight months out of the year. And yes, 20 degrees 
Fahrenheit. It doesn't boost my hypertrophic uh, capacities. It doesn't make me bigger. It's just very uncomfortable. Do I get small benefits from it? Yeah. Do I get high and very severe disadvantages from it? Yes, because it sucks to train in what is essentially a freezer. I do it because I don't have a choice, but I would never recommend anyone doing that. The issue is that for people, again, who are highly depressed, who are anxious, who are constantly fatigued, that type of idea is very palatable. When you tell them that they just need to expose themselves to the cold and all of their problems are going to be resolved, it's something that they're going to buy. The issue, of course, is that they, ch they themselves changing their lifestyle to copy that of Liver King is not going to do jack for them because he is selling them that lifestyle based off of his physique. And it's something very important to say as well. None of these people, and I think I've said it already, but I'll, I'll repeat it. None of these people follow him to actually get healthier. None of these people follow him to actually connect with their ancestors. They all follow him because they want to get as jacked as him. That is the God honest truth. It's the same every single time. These guys are going to hide themselves behind ideas of health and, again, spirituality, but it's all a fucking joke at the end of the day. Everyone who follows that guy knows that it's because they want to look like him, but they will never be able to. He's going to constantly get them to do stupid shit that will never actually work. Meaning that this guy, Liver King, is actually an agent of modernity, just like every single one of these guys that is trying to actually commercialize and make put a price tag on masculinity, it's very easy to see the ones that are actually working for the enemy and working towards the destruction of males. They're always the same. They always do it for profit. Again, he perceived that there is a lack of masculinity and he weaseled himself into the mix to make a profit. That is what is called full masculinity. It's based, again, always also on a, a pseudo tough guy persona. If you look through it, if you think about it in the terms that I've described, you will be able to tell every single time when a fellow brother is trying to help you or when they're trying to empty your wallet. Seeking discomfort is good. I'm not going to discourage you to do that. If you want to get cold, get cold, but understand that it won't make you jacked. Instead, it will give you the personality to achieve a good body. In truth, that's what discomfort does. It makes you tougher inside, which allows you to actually follow training principles, follow regimens for years and months that is going to result in a very good body. But it's not what gives you the body in the first place. It just turns you into a human that can get the body with effort. And the problem is that this ancestral living that this guy is promoting is not going to achieve that for the average person because you're not going to stick to it. The only thing you will stick to is the paid products that he's going to sell on the side and he's fully aware of that. If it were as easy as telling people, hey, stop jerking off and stop drinking alcohol and actually get into the cold and train, well, the solution would already have been found and we would have saved masculinity already. But it's not that easy. Why? Because people don't want to do difficult things. This guy perfectly understands that. And the entire shtick also looks like a LARP, in my opinion, because the, the beard and the commando stuff and going into the forest shirtless, I mean, all of that looks very good, as I said. It's gimmicky, as I said, but it's also based on a certain idea that eating liver once a week is going to make you a hunter-gatherer. Sorry to say that again, but you are what you are, which is a modern man. You cannot just go back and hope that everything is going to be for the better. It's not going to work like this. And uh, as I said, all of that is based on the fake perception of masculinity. So that is for the code. Now, let's talk about the sun exposure, which is number seven. Now, sun exposure is, of course, very good for you. But it, just like the code, will not make you jacked. What will, you make, what will make you very jacked, however, is drugs. And I find it particularly strange that someone like him, who is clearly on drugs, would promote health. I, it's, they always manage to find a way to tell you that the way they live is healthy. It, of course, is not healthy because PDs are not healthy. And our ancestors, and it's a newsflash coming directly from your favorite Frenchman, were not on grams and grams of exogenous hormones. Again, the guy has the balls 
and it's something that I almost admire him for it, to promote ancestral living while at the same time being a resort of modernity. Without his injections, he wouldn't look like this and he wouldn't be able to sell the products that he sells. This entire thing has absolutely nothing to do with our ancestors and everything to do with this modern world, as I said, because he's an agent of it. I also want to say that, uh, and that's something that I presented before, PD users have turned into the paradigm and the paragon of masculinity, even though themselves have completely turned their back on their own hormonal production. How exactly did we get to the point that we respect dudes that if you took away their syringes for two months, they, they would look like cheerleaders. They would look like they're slowly transitioning into a tadpole. Why is it acceptable? Well, it's because we live in a society where the visual and the spectacle is the most important thing. People like Liver King have perfectly understood that. When you look at the guy, what you're looking at in reality is a theatrical representation. The theatrics and the show he's putting on is the most important part of his personality. He has nothing else. The rest is devoid of content and dev devoid, therefore, of value. And that's what I'm trying to expose right now by describing the practices and the strategies he puts into place. Now, he also preaches ancestral living, as I said, but his body is the, is the result of modern drugs. It's modernity in a sense that is masquerading as the way of the ancients. This is not the way of the ancients, of course. And to go back on uh, what I said already too with the connection with the, the ground and the fact that he says it's good for high blood pressure and heart attacks, you take one look at the guy and you think to yourself, okay, you're constantly red. Are you red because you take the sun or are you red because your blood pressure is through the fucking roof? Because at the end of the day, he looks like a lobster 24-7. And I think we've all seen that look before. We've all seen that reddish tint that these guys get on the chest and on the upper arms that tends to signal an early death. It tends to signal someone who is abusing products that is spiking his red blood cells that is going to end up catastrophical because it's not good for your health. I'm just throwing that out there. Again, it's part of the hypocrisy of promoting health through the ancestral tenets while at the same time blasting grams and grams of stuff. So that's for the sun thing. As you can see, the sun didn't have much to do with it because the, the more you look at the practices, the more you interest yourself in what is actually happening, the more you realize that what you're being told has absolutely nothing to do with what is actually being feel, uh, projected and being actually injected into your subconscious mind. Number eight is fight. His idea is that you need to fight to be more masculine. You need to fight to develop a better body. First off, bodybuilders aren't fighters. If you got into this game to get, a, to get stronger in terms of hand-to-hand -hand combat or to prove that you're the man and you can take on anyone, you chose the wrong sport. You should have chosen MMA or boxing, but bodybuilding is not going to do much for you. I know again that normies take one look at a guy and they see big muscles and they think, oh, this guy knows how to fight, he's very dangerous, he's a trained fighter. That is nonsense. This guy, Liver King, would get smoked by anyone who has any relevant fighting background. That, of course, is something that people who know about fighting can tell you as well, but that people who know nothing don't, so they will fall for that type of gimmick. Again, the tough guy, uh, the tough guy persona is very prevalent on the internet. Uh, it's also usually accompanied with guns, which no surprise I found on his, on his Instagram. Look, if I tell you that there's a guy with a beard, with a lot of muscles, with guns, who is going to speak about fighting, who do you think of? You think of every single fucking influencer that targets young men who are lacking in masculinity and who will embrace any amount of it as long as it's in your face, loud and, again, very exuberant. All of that works. Well, I'll tell you that masculinity is not what you think. In my opinion, this is not really masculinity. It's not toxic masculinity either. It's just bullshit masculinity. And he is actually a good example of that. It's the reason why I wanted to make this video is because not only does he represent what is, wood, uh, what is terrible with bodybuilding, the fact that he's pushing ideas that will not result in muscle growth and will get actually people angry and resentful towards bodybuilders because he calls himself 
a bodybuilder and in articles he again is always presented as a bodybuilder but more importantly he always plays off of the masculinity a ton and it's extremely uh, visible in the way he addresses people and the way he talks about himself first off he talks about himself in the third person which should be a dead giveaway that the guy has a problem he calls himself liver king as he types himself that is either someone who has a god complex or someone who is trying to present themselves as the chief of the tribe as the head of the tribe and he actually calls his subscribers primos and constantly actually tries to present the idea that they're all in this together and that they are just you know brothers in arms etc this guy is what Nerobis would have been if he had been successful which is a scary thought because if you know who Nether Beast is, you know that he is a complete fucking freak. Now, all of what I just described has all of the traits of a masculinity cult. I'm sure that you've encountered them on the internet. It's a guy that again has understood the same thing that Liver King has, sucks in a lot of young men, and then sells them seminars, sells them programs, ebooks, supplements to be more of a man, to be more of an alpha, to be more of a macho. Does that work? No, of course it doesn't but it gets them very, very rich. Let me tell you one thing. Worshipping and following a man is the exact opposite of masculinity. Masculinity is the identity of the individual. It's the ability to stand by yourself, to develop your own personality. If you're just, again, falling for every single schmuck with big biceps who is going to give you daddy vibes, you're never going to be a man. You're going to constantly stay a kid, and that's exactly what this guy has gotten as well. He is a dad to these people, meaning that he keeps them in a state of arrested development. He never wants them to emancipate themselves, because if they do, if they actually become man, man, he's going to lose them. He's going to lose that portion of his audience. This is the exact opposite of a male power fantasy. A male power fantasy pushes you forward. This is just plain old fanboyism. A large portion of the people who are going to fall for that guy, who are going to start following him, are going to be fanboys, they're going to look up to him like a god, and he understands that, he plays off of it. He plays off of it by the way he addresses you, the way he, he actually addresses himself, all of that is part of the show. But it's truly sad to see that all it took for a guy to amass that amount of followers was a beard, muscles, and charisma. That's all it took. And of course, you sprinkle a bunch of hatred of modernity and going back to nature and all of that hippie bullshit and that just went swimmingly it was all it actually took but i hope that what i'm doing right now is helping you break the conditioning if you are one of the people that actually fell for it and if not it's helping you think about how to prevent yourself from falling for that trap for the next guy that appears because i guarantee you that liver king is just another iteration of an archetype that is going to keep repeating itself as long as masculinity will be in crisis. There will always be people who are going to try and abuse that situation to make money and convince, convince the masses. Now, to continue on that topic as well, he strikes me as another middle-aged dude who discovered exogenous hormones and turned into a guru, and they are a dime a dozen. There's a garbage, garbage heap of that type. And the proof I have of this is that I couldn't really find a picture of him from the past. Meaning that usually the best way to know if someone has jumped on drugs is to look at their progression. But his progression is non-existent because he seems to have just appeared out of nowhere. It's like mushrooms after the rain. And it's always the same with these types. They don't really want you to be able to look into their past because if you could, you could actually look and see that their persona is bullshit. Now... He gives a sub-story about his children having allergies, so he changed his way of life, and that is the reason why he's now massive and jacked, by staying natural. I don't buy it. I just hope that it's going to be worth it for his two boys, I think, to live without allergies and without a dad when he eventually dies of a heart attack. So that is for the fighting part of it. I'm certain that this dude would pretend to be natty because he's only on TRT and therefore it's not actually unnatural. Considering that he preaches all of that stuff about modernity and going back to the ancient tenets, I could see him actually arguing that because this modern world is toxic, he needed to inject products into his bloodstream to go back to normal levels of testosterone. 
As I explained, that is completely nonsensical. Don't blame your environment. You control the environment, so just get out of it. You could follow the tenets if you wanted, because as I said, they're not bad. Just don't fall for what fo comes afterwards. Don't fall for the marketing schemes that are attached to it. For example, the weighted carcass carry. Simulating hunts by doing CrossFit workouts. All of that stuff is not going to do shit for you. Please don't do it. The only thing you will do by carrying a deer carcass on your shoulders for miles is you're going to get Lyme disease. That's all you're going to win and you're going to just waste away. None of that is, of course, good for size and none of his advice is good for size. And now we're going to finish with the bond. The bond is the idea that you need other people and you need to connect. And that is a very nice idea. Again, what a revolution that humans need other humans. Of course, it doesn't stop there. The reason why he, Liver King, promotes that type of mindset is because it serves his court. It helps with the formation of a court. I also find it particularly interesting because at some point... He says that he's a brother with everyone, of course, but he also expands that to animals. And he says, oh, I walk the same earth and I touch the same sun and I drink the same water. Well, you also eat them, motherfucker. I mean, I don't understand why vegans are not all over this guy. He is the perfect representation of the meathead, of someone who, again, is going to have a certain set of ideas that appear at first glance to be connected with nature, but then he'll gleefully consume pounds and pounds of meat Pounds and pounds of animals, because if you look at this guy's diet, it's a fucking nightmare. So, again, I'm not vegan myself. I eat plenty of animals. I'm not going to be one to lecture him. I just find it highly hypocritical to pretend to be in connection with nature and then to fucking shoot a deer in the face and eat its organs like it's no big deal. I have the decency to admit that I don't feel that, that way towards the animals I eat. I eat them because they are inferior. That's that. There's no brotherhood there. But the brotherhood discussion here is interesting because he goes as far as to equate us humans with animals because we share similar DNAs. And that's typical pseudoscience. I don't know if you knew that, but for example, we have like 96% DNA in common with flies, with a certain type of flies. Does it mean that we're flies or that we're very close to them? No, it just means that DNA is just completely misunderstood. A guy like him utilized that to, again, promote his idea of the ancient lifestyle, which is also very funny because if there is one thing that our ancestors didn't do is respect animals. We killed them and we ate them for survival. None of that, you know, full good mindset of being connected, like, well, I'm going to go into the forest and hug a bear. That didn't exist back then. The bear was the enemy. Every single animal was the enemy. The only thing was that we were numerous enough or intelligent enough to destroy nature at the rate that we're doing it right now. It has nothing to do with actually liking nature. It's just that back then, we were made bitches. We were made into nature's bitches, and nowadays, nature is our bitch. It's just that the power imbalance has shifted. But I'm going into topics that are very interesting, but are reserved for the video I'm going to make about vegans. So for now, I will just say that for someone to use the argument of brotherhood to sell products and supplements, I personally find it very disgusting because it's hypocritical. When he says stuff like, I believe that my fellow man is my brother. Well, that is very nice, but I personally don't want to be his brother. It's uh, also very telling that the type of people that will see him as a brother are the type to get sucked in by pictures of a shirtless man throwing javelins around in the wood. We have gotten to a point where men are so emasculated and so disconnected from who they are that you can just plug a dude again running through the bush with a javelin and that's enough to get them hard. That's enough for them to open their wallet and open their heart, which is much more saddening in a sense. But I've already said that. It also saddens me because his tribe, the brothers that surround him and live like him, are skinny. And that is verifiable. You can just Google him and you will find that he has groups and seminars and people who train like him and eat like him. They all look like they've, ne like they've never picked a weight in their life. And I always ask myself, okay, are you that delusional that you don't see that there is a problem? The guy has a hundred pounds of muscles on you he keeps claiming he's natural, yet you don't even look close to what he is. 
So which is it? I thought that his methods were the reason why he looked like that, but you follow them and you look like total shit. Well, I think it's just that these people are so deep in the cognitive dissonance and so deep in fanboyism that they'll never actually realize that. They'll be suckers for life. And I think he has a million subscribers on Instagram. So there's actually a million dumbasses who fell for that bullshit, even though it should be evident at first glance that it's nonsense. But it, it truly is a, a treat to go onto Google Image and to look up images of the tribe because, again, they look like marathon runners. Which is fitting because that's what our ancestors would have looked like in the first place. And that is because, again, as I said, the main argument to sell his lifestyle is his physique, not the health benefit or happiness that comes and surrounds the entire product. But the people that actually follow him will never attain such physique. And the proof that the physique is the most important part is that he is shirtless in 100% of his posts. I don't really see why he would need to do that if he were just a spiritual guru trying to inspire people to live a more nature-oriented lifestyle. At the end of the day, what he's trying to sell to you is big pecs and a six-pack. That's it. And I will finish this video by saying that I don't think our ancestors took 500 pictures a day for Instagram or had a perfectly sculpted beard. I think that's modernity speaking. That's what we do nowadays with our hubris. And that's exactly what someone who actually wants to start a business, wants to start products, would actually do. Because the entire idea of capitalism and of trying to, again, utilize your image, utilize your clout to be able to sell stuff to people is brand fucking new. And if this guy actually just wanted to be part of the tribe, he would share his revolutionary ideas for free. Of course, he doesn't. He, had a f he has a full website that was designed by someone who knew exactly what they were doing that is just the perfect machine to sell non-stop products. And of course, also, our ancestors didn't take drugs. But I read on his website that he plans on visiting ancestral tribes all around the globe to see the way they've been living and like to observe like National Geographic again to see like the the tidbits and the, the, the golden information he can bring to make us modern men from Western nations better at, again, being more anabolic or being more muscular or more connected with nature. Or the only thing I hope is that, one, he doesn't get captured or none of these guys actually throw a spear through his ass because they mistake him with a shaved ape. And also, I hope he's going to bring them Tren because if he actually hopes to take pictures of these guys to put on his website and sell the products and the supplements through them, he's going to be disappointed because most of these ancestral tribes are, yes, very lean, they're very jacked, but they're not massive or bloated because, surprise, surprise, they don't have an endless supply of Debo in their village. And I'm going to leave you with that. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.